due to the potentially dark and frightening content of our investigations, this episode may not be suitable for younger audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Ghosts, spirits, demons. What are these entities? What do they want? And why are they here? My paranormal investigation crew's goal is to answer these questions and others like them. Who are you? Questions we've been asking for centuries. Why are you here? We've assembled a crew of the most dedicated enthusiasts in the area to capture evidence of these entities. What we find might be disturbing, dangerous even, but we are prepared for the journey ahead of us. The question is, are you prepared to take this journey with us? It's midnight. Follow me into the darkness, guided only by Midnight's Light. This is Midnight's Light Paranormal. We're back in Metamora, Indiana for this year's Halloween special. This time we've been invited to investigate four different historical locations. The Gym Mine, also known as the Mount Holland House, the Van Camp Building, Dr. Cup's House, and the Allison Home, also known by locals as the Gingerbread House and the Pink House. The Mount Holland House, now known as the Gym Mine, is actually the second building to be on this plot of land. The original house was built by David Mount in the early 1800s and burnt down in the late 1800s. The Holland family then built the existing building on the same lot. This building is important in Metamora's history due to its ties with both of the founding families of the village, the Mounts, and the Hollands. We sat down with the owner of the gym mine, Victor, to learn more about the building and its paranormal happenings. Now, I know David Mount had a young ward, a girl that he took in as, um, I think her parents got sick and he adopted the child after her parents died. Um, one of the experiences we have in here when we come in, sometimes when I'm with my wife or my wife is alone, she'll hear a small child saying, Mom. And we attribute this to the, the girl that David Mount took to raise and claimed as his own. Another experience, when we first moved in, it was dead of winter. We had no heat in this building, and me and my wife were kind of cold. We were living upstairs at the time. My wife wanted to light a propane salamander heater. I kind of advised against it because you're not supposed to use them indoors. But my wife was cold, so the guy I am, I fired it up to try and get her warm. The heater was sitting in the doorway upstairs. The propane tank was in the opposite room. Out of nowhere, it looked like somebody kicked the front of the propane heater. It launched maybe two to three foot in the air, fell into the other room on its side. It did not shut down. Usually they have a mechanism that will shut them down if they fall over sideways. Um, as I approached the heater, it did a 180 degree spin on its own and faced the flames towards the propane tank. I immediately jumped over the heater and turned the valve off on the propane tank. I kind of attribute this to the mount house burning down. They didn't want no more fires, especially in this house. I know back in the early 1800s, Metamore was plagued with all kinds of fires. I think they were, the spirits of the house were trying to say, hey, that's not a good idea to light this in here. On a separate occasion, we sent our psychic medium Steve into the gym mine to conduct a reading. One thing that really stands out about this place is, and, and I'm just going to say, it, I'm sure it's because of all the crystals and, 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 and rocks and gems and everything that's in here, but it, um, it hums with like earth energy. And it's, it, it's, it's funny because I initially thought that, that this place could be like a portal for spirits. It's not a portal. What it is is it's like a beacon because of all this stuff and it's funny because it has attracted the attention of some like ancient spirits like native americans and you know what's so weird is let's see where this this is the front of the house i feel them back there like on like i don't know probably about 50 yards from this house back there and you know this is weird because it's like every property that i've been in um in Metamora, I feel like has uh, been on fire. Or um, um, I wonder, and we should probably check this out. Um, 
if there was like some kind of big fire here one time or something like in a bunch of the houses burn or something we should probably we should probably check that out like look that up or whatever i know back in the early 1800s metamore was plagued with all kinds of fires this property was important um important people lived here um on this property um like a mayor or or something there's a little girl spirit here and she's really shy and faint and um uh soft sometimes when i'm with my wife or my wife is alone she'll hear a small child saying mom and we attribute this to the the girl that david mount took to raise and claimed as his own then i got names um um nora david annabelle john and gregory next on our list is dr cups house dr cups was metamora's local doctor he often made trips a few doors down to the Martindale house to assist in delivering children in what is known as the birthing room or borning room. One interesting story involving the doctor resulted from him learning of his wife's affair. After he had caught wind of this potential affair, he exclaimed one night that he was leaving for business and would be back much later that evening. Soon after his departure, he returned home early to find a young Harry Martindale inside with Mrs. Cups. Martindale ended up jumping from the two-story window to avoid the doctor's fit of rage. To no surprise, divorce was filed soon after. We sat down with the current residents of the building, Angie and Joyce, to learn about their paranormal experiences there. Well, the only thing that I know some people came in, it's been a month and a half ago or so, and they wanted to see the upstairs because their grandfather had abused his children, who would have been these kids' parents. And she's always gotten this real bad vibe in there and come to find out he was locking them in the closets. That was where the children, Dr. Cup, the children that were recuperating were in that room too. So the other experiences that we've had are we always hear people really late in the night, like one, two, three o'clock, you hear something on the stairs and it's, you can tell it's something coming up. It's something coming up the stairs, not going down. It's coming up. We're always hearing things on the stairs and then we've had things disappear that should never have disappeared. Pliers, that one pair of pliers. Wire cutters. Mm -hmm. We've had pliers disappear that we cannot find anywhere. They're nowhere to be found. And I know that I had them the night before, went to sleep, and woke up and they were gone. This reminded us of a similar situation two doors down at the Martindale house. In our last episode, Dirk told us that he would constantly lose his hammers, which they attributed to an entity that they called Walter. Once again, we sent in Steve to do a reading of Dr. Cup's house. I see like a mean old man, like pooking and... He's gritting his teeth, not nice. He was abused as a child. Um, um, his father or mother or somebody would lock him in a root cellar, like underground, away from the house, and 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 beat him with a belt. Um, this and then so he grew up to be not a nice person. Walter. Remember Walter? Mm -hmm. I didn't write this down because I just got it um, from uh, next door. I feel Walter here. So maybe as Walter isn't, I don't think was ever a human, but um, his energy apparently can travel from there to here. So I wonder if he goes other places, or it goes other places. <laughs> and then I got Rose Caroline Perkins. Those are some names. Um, and then the last thing I got, oh no, this is really disturbing. Crying children. That room. I don't know what that's about, but it's, it's terrible. 
We later found out that Joyce has a name for the mannequin in the back room. She calls her Caroline. Next up is the Van Camp building. The Van Camps came to Metamora in 1851. They opened up a drugstore, which was the scene of a horrific accident in 1870. We spoke with the owner of the building, who let us in on some of the details of this accident. Hi, I'm Kathy from the Haunted Tour of Metamore. Uh, we're here in my building, the Van Camp building. Uh, the Van Camp building is best known around here because of the tragic accident that happened back in 1870. In 1870, Mrs. Van Camp had uh, the first gasoline delivered to Metamore in a gas burner. And she was told by the salesman that it was completely harmless. Uh, her barrel leaked and her and her son went down to replace the fluid into a new barrel where it exploded and took many of them with them. In fact, the explosion, which was sparked by a lantern, blew the front of the building off and killed all four of the people who were in the basement. Mrs. Mary Van Camp, her son Charles, and her grandchildren, little George and Angeline Kemble. Sadly, their deaths were not instantaneous. They were all burnt so badly that they only survived a few hours. In the building here ourselves, I've had mediums come in several times. They've told us about the two children, I believe is George and uh, Angeline Kimball. We also have a, another spirit here that's not quite so friendly. We're not sure who he is. Uh, he likes to take out light bulbs. He likes to mess with our electric a lot. And he leaves a terrible smell in our basement. Things do disappear on a regular basis. Most of the time they come back, sometimes not for a long time. Could Walter be present in this building as well? We sent in Steve to see what he picked up on. Right away, um, I can definitely tell that there's children here, but um, spirits. But the thing about the children is, is they're not paying too much attention to what goes on here. I see them playing like marbles. I've had mediums come in several times. They've told us about the two children. I bet you if they were to look, if they were to look through this place, like dig around or whatever, they would find marbles. This is so disturbing, I almost don't want to say it on camera, but uh, um, I feel a woman screaming and trying to scream because she's on fire, but then she can't get, the oxygen is gone. So she can't scream, she can't make a sound. And she's gagging and she's like trying to scream and, and there's flesh hanging off of her, her, it's awful. There's another presence here, but you know, it's, it's really funny because it's, which makes me suspicious, but it's like hiding from me. It's like trying to hide from me, which makes me wonder if it's not so good. We also have a, another spirit here that's not quite so friendly. We're not sure who he is. Between Steve's readings and the interviews that we conducted, we felt that we had gathered enough information to be ready to take on night one of our investigation of Metamora. Because we are investigating four locations, we've decided to split them up between two nights. For night one, we will be investigating the gym mine, Dr. Cup's house, and the Van Camp building. Night 2 will feature the Allison home, which we will cover later. Due to the size of this two-night event, we have brought along several guest investigators who are familiar with Metamora, Cheryl and Thomas. For night 1, we will be setting up our tech base in two of the locations, the gym mine and Dr. Cup's house. We will also periodically check in with members of our team who investigate the Van Camp building throughout the night. We start off at the gym mine, where we've set up five stationary cameras, including one upstairs where we have placed our rim pod, one downstairs in the front room with the stones and crystals, and one facing the hallway upstairs. Before we even begin our investigation, Camera 1 catches a loud breath near the recorder upstairs.
We decide to start things off by sending out Steve, Hayden, and myself for a spirit box session and a millimeter sweep. Can you say hello to me? Ooh! What? No way. What? After further examination of the area, we found nothing that would have caused the millimeter to spike that high. Like to say anything. Go ahead. There was a little girl that I felt. Oh, 4.2. Really? 4.2. I know that's nothing like a 20. These are some of the highest spikes we have ever recorded on our millimeter. We then head upstairs to finish our session. Oh, point two. Point one. Those aren't crazy spikes, but they're spikes nonetheless. Shortly after returning to our tech base, Camera 3 catches this orb moving from this room into the room where we were sitting earlier. Take another look. At this point, we decide to introduce our newest piece of investigative equipment. The IDC Direct Link FX. It's a handheld direct contact ITC device. It uses your body as the antenna for reception. This version includes external controls for echo and reverb. This device was specially made for us, and at the time that we filmed this episode, it was only in the hands of a select few paranormal investigation teams around the world, most of which are on television. How old are you? There's a possibility that this could be a residual haunting. You can still pick up audio from a residual haunting, but maybe that's why they're not responding to our questions. Over at the Van Camp building, Hayden and Cheryl test their luck with the spirit box. We've set up one camera in the basement where the tragic explosion happened. We've also placed a rim pod on camera. Is there anybody here who wants to say anything? Is there anybody down here? We didn't receive any responses during the spirit box session, but shortly after this, the basement camera captures a strange noise that even seems to echo. Could this be the residual energy from the tragedy that occurred here in 1870? I feel a woman screaming and trying to scream because she's on fire, but then she can't get, the oxygen is gone, so she can't scream. Back at the gym mine, after finishing our direct link session, we decide to gather the team to try something else. We bring out our 3D camera, as well as our Ovilus 5, for one last sweep of the building. The uh, historical moment in MLP history, yep. we have our own Richard, yep. Mr. Dick, in the field. <laughs> we want to try to communicate with the little girl that Steve sensed at this location. Richard decides to use the ovulus because he is a teacher and we believe that she may feel more comfortable communicating with him. I'm a teacher, it's okay. You can talk to us.
Do you know where you are? Do you like playing games? Uh, What's that right there? That is not either of you. That's not Aiden. Is that in through the doorway? In the other room? Yeah, yeah that's, the that's the doorway. Oh my gosh. Okay. You got something? Yep, and now oh, it's really gone. Not. You can touch this. What was that? Did you hear that? I, that was me moving. They're back. And that's not Richard, right? No, nope, that that's doorway? the doorway. Oh my gosh. You got it? Can you touch that device for us on the couch? Oh my gosh. All you have to do is put your hand over top that little metal piece. It'll light up. That'll give us a sign. I just read your left. Radio. What's that? Is it radio? Radio. radio. Okay, yeah. Okay, it's, yeah. It's, yes, it, it has an antenna. Yep. Oh, somebody talk. It's one person. Don't freak him out. Yeah, it is like a radio. If you touch the antenna, it'll it'll work. It's like a toy; it'll light up. You should touch it. Can you touch that device? All you have to do is put your hand on that metal antenna. It won't hurt you. It's yeah. just like a radio. Yeah, it won't hurt you at all. Richard, do you want to demonstrate, maybe? Again? Yeah, touch the because it's in the doorway. It's not. You're making a scare. No. Okay, he's gonna walk over and and show you how to use it. Okay, so here's what you do. If you just come around it or touch it, you see that? It's fun. It looks like it's watching us. Yes, it What'd it say? It looks like some fun. Together. Yeah, together. yeah, yeah we're you all guys together. Can do it together. Yeah, you can touch it. It's okay. Oh, he ran right towards it. We feel that we successfully communicated with a spirit upstairs. Could it have been the little girl? At this point, we decide to wrap things up at the gym mine and move our tech base over to Dr. Cup's house. We set up four stationary cameras around the building, including one in the back room where Caroline the mannequin is placed. We have also set up our latest experimental piece of equipment in this room, our LUR apparatus or laser interference rig. This device will sound and flash when something interrupts the laser beam. We've also placed a camera in the upstairs bedroom with a view of our REM pod, as well as a window where many people have reported seeing a figure. Thomas, Devin, and myself take the FLIR thermal camera and a digital recorder out for our initial sweep of the building. You can use this to show yourself. You see that green line? If you interrupt that green line, if you put your hand through it, it'll give us a sign. Can you do that? I'm going to show you how this laser works. If you just interrupt it anywhere, it'll go off. Can you do that for me? Can you give us a sign? I see a figure. Is there a mannequin back there? glass. Oh, there's a mirror here. That's why. We then send Hayden, Thomas, and Steve out with the Ovulus 5 and direct link. Star. What are they? Star. Star? Yes. Really? They're divided. Divided? Were you locked in the closet? People. Who was locked in the closet? Could this be in reference to the children who were locked in closets here? Can you tell me who that is? Right there? We're not trying to hurt you or invade your home. Can you make one any of these things here move, maybe? Try to make these move. Disturb. Disturb? 
Ida. More disturbing you? Disturb and Ida. Are we disturbing you? Are we disturbing Ida? Or Ida? Is or it Ida? Ida? Yeah, it could be Ida. So are we disturbing you? Is this bothering you? If then tell us to leave. True. So it's true, true that you're mad. Oh, butterfly above you is moving. Really? Butterfly above you is moving. Yeah, I told it to move it. Yeah, look. Or him or her. Look, hold on. He's going back and forth. Yeah. Butterfly above you. Oh yeah, one. the one going directly above you. The other one is moving. The one directly above you. I want everyone to know this is there is no air in here at all. No, they no. said band. Band? What did they say band? B A N D. Band. As you can see, these butterflies are well above Steve's head, so we believe that there is no way that he could have influenced them at all, especially the little one. As we take a break at Dr. Cup's house, Thomas, Steve, and myself take the Ovulus and Digital Recorder into the Van Camp building. Can you try to talk to me? You think you can? Shh. I just told you this. Measure. Oh my gosh. I'm telling you. That entity is not letting them talk. We believe that Walter, a mysterious entity, may be keeping these spirits from communicating. We also believe that this entity has the ability to do this in multiple locations around Metamora. That being said, we received no other responses in this building the rest of the night. As we regroup back at Dr. Cup's house, Devin and I decide to do one last sweep of the building using the Melmeter and the full spectrum video camera. While doing this, something amazing happens. It's going on. Oh, it's going on. Yeah, your watch is going on. Yeah, get over there. Mm -hmm. And it's still locked in, too. Okay. And it's shut off now. Because the lure sounded repeatedly, we believe that something may have been standing in its path. The question is, what? This seemed to be a good place to end night one of our investigation. The next morning, we decide to take a break to ride the local train. Hayden in particular was very excited for this experience. Needless to say, we all had a little fun. The main focus of day two was the Allison home, also known as the Gingerbread House or the Pink House by locals. The Allison home was built in the 1870s by Monroe Allison. He built the house for his wife, Naomi, who often found herself spending a lot of alone time there due to Monroe's job on the canal. Because of this, Naomi developed a relationship with an artist who lived in a nearby cottage. Mr. Allison was a very jealous man, and when he caught them, he hung the artist from the large tree just down the hill from the property. Naomi watched in horror from the second story window as Monroe not only hung her lover, but set fire to him as well. Shortly after, she disappeared and was discovered again when she passed away in Michigan. She was returned home and buried next to her husband. We caught up with the current owner of the building, Katrina, who has some interesting stories that involve Naomi Allison. So can you tell me a little bit about what you have stories-wise about this house? Um, there, there are a lot of stories that we've heard. Um, I grew up around here and I've always 
I've always loved this little house. I mean, as a little girl, it's a pink house with mixed mash gingerbread, and for a little hippie chick, that's you know a dream come true. Oh, yeah. So I always loved the house. When I was a little girl, I had a recurring dream um, of being chased through an old house. It was in it was an old house, and it was um, kind of rickety and shabby looking, and um, I kept I was being chased by something, and I kept going like upstairs and hiding in little cubbies and stuff, and then. I'd hear them coming again and I'd go upstairs again and I kept mm-hmm. finding more stairways to go up and then I would wind up kind of at the top of everything in a glass room um, and um, it was just a recurring dream. I didn't know what it meant or anything. A lot of people have recurring yeah. dreams. So when I came into the house for the first time when we were looking at it, um, as soon as I walked in the house, it just looked so familiar to me I was like oh it just was that really big feeling of deja vu everything was just very 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 familiar and I knew I hadn't been in the house before I knew right where the stairway was to go upstairs I kind of was walking straight to everything and um and I I was really weird I was just like I don't know how you know what this is all about and about halfway through I realized it dawned on me that this was the house that was in my dream that's crazy yeah yeah it's pretty crazy it's meant to be yeah and there's always been ghost stories we've heard the ghost stories about the lady the the ghost lady that walks the tower there's a we call it the tower but it's like a it's like a widow's walk up there on the top yeah so there was um there's a builder in the area named Mm -hmm. bob arcaro and he's he's gone now um he passed away a few years ago um but um the Metamora has a, a lot of folks that live here that have a lot of ghost stories and they have a lot of experiences and um, they see orbs and they see UFOs and you know yeah. those kinds of there's people that you you expect to have those kinds of stories yeah. you know and um, but Bobby was not one of those people Bobby built my house um, down the road um, that I built like years and years ago and he was my contractor down there when we built the house and he's just this little wiry gruff no nonsense kind of guy you know a man of few words and um, he was working upstairs um, on the roof of this house years and years ago and he told my husband Tom this story so this is second hand um, but he said um, he was up there on the roof and when you're on the roof you're eye level with the tower with the with the widow's walk which is all glass yeah and um, he said he was up there on the roof and he looked up and right there in the widow's walk was this woman and he was like you can't be in here this is not okay you know and so he was like he was trying to signal to her he went down got off the ladder and came in and went mm-hmm. up to tell her that she had to leave and it, there was nobody here nobody there yeah so that was the, the ghost lady that every talks about so okay yeah a week prior to our interview with Katrina our psychic medium Steve came to the Allison home for a reading of the building the first thing I, I felt when I came in here that, that, that there's a woman okay and um, um, initially like when I first felt her energy um, it, it was like it was residual but then I get the impression that she has like um, like harassed people from time to time. So at, as a spirit, but it's weird. So I kind of think what really comes through with her is um, um, grief, real bad uh, grief, like uh, very sad and um, grief stricken. And then, um, she, she's like in mourning and she curses God. She's really angry with um, because of her loss. Let me give you some names that I got. Um, um, Henry, Albert, Clay, Elaine, Mary, Susan, and Abigail. There's a little boy and I can still kind of feel him. I can, I can kind of feel him still on the periphery a little bit and I want to try to communicate with him like on maybe we can use our new device or something. but. There's a little boy, and I think that's Henry, and he drowned, okay? That's how he passed away. And But he's telling me, and I don't know if he means in this plane or in this house, but he says he doesn't belong here. Like, I almost feel like he doesn't belong in this house or to this house. But he drowned somewhere, like maybe in the canal or in that creek down there or whatever, or wherever, 
We later found out that in 1870, an eight-year-old boy did indeed drown in the canal while fishing. As the sun sets in Metamora, night two of our investigation is just getting started. Our guest investigator for the night is Greg Hale. How are you feeling? You ready to hunt some ghosts? I'm, I'm ready. I'm All right. Ready Hopefully we'll get something for you. All right. All right. We've set up six stationary cameras around the building in places that we believe to be hot spots, including one in the front dining room, one with a view of the staircase that leads to the widow's watch, and one in the main room upstairs. We have set up an old-fashioned television in this room as an experiment. We want to see if the spirits here can draw from the TV's energy to communicate with us. We decide to get things started here by sending Thomas and myself out for an ovulus session. You can use this device in his hand to speak with us. Can you tell me your name? Speed. Malevolent. Who's malevolent? Did you just make a noise? Something just moved upstairs. That wasn't you? No. What we heard was something captured upstairs on camera two. As you can see, this was not something that was caused by our tech base. Charge uh, mine. I'll listen for now. Anyone here like to speak with us? Roger. R Roger. R O D G E R. Roger. Roger. Is and they said it in a British accent. Is that your name? Is your name Roger? Yeah. 40. It's every time I start to come to walk up these steps. 40. 40 what? Were you 40 years old? You lived here 40 years? Top Bell. Year. Maybe when he said 40, the year. So 1840, 1940? Ashes. Ashes. At this point, Devin joins the investigation with the Melmeter to see if we can detect any electromagnetic energy at the bottom of the stairs. Point one. Are you going with us? Speak. Speak. We yes, speak. you are speaking with us. Point yes, two. We're very happy you're speaking with us. We want to we get to know you. We want to learn about you. Devin did get a reading of 0 0.2 while we were receiving the word speak on the ovulus. 0 0.3, 0 0.5. And there's nothing here. There's no. nothing here. 0.5, solid. Are you right here? Can you say something to us? 0.4. Look at this. 0.4, nothing here. 0.5. 0.5. Nothing here. And I can show. I can There's nothing. Okay, well. There's a sh like a blanket on a wooden rack. Point four. Point six. Point seven. Point eight. eight. That's the highest so far. Point, Point eight. eight. I'm standing in the window. I just felt something on my ear, my arm here on the right. This is the window where it is said that Naomi watched as her lover was hung and burned by her husband. Is that recording? 1.0. 1.0. 1.4. 1.4. 1.4. 1.5. 1.5. 1.6. 1.6. 1.7. 1.8. 1.9. 1.10. 1.11. 1.12. 1.13. 1.14. 1.15. 1.16. 1.17. 
Ma dove sta il mio? The light is here. Just a few moments after Steve saw something in the back room, Hayden was using the Ovilus 5 back at our tech base. Walter! Walter! We just got Walter. We just got Walter. Walter needs Oh, you know, it's 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 our medium Steve believes that he has the ability to move easily through Metamora due to the canal that runs through the middle of the village. Water is said to give spirits energy, which may be how Walter is able to go from one location to the next so freely. We also believe that he feeds off of the energy from each location and spirit. Therefore, he is able to subdue them and keep them from communicating easily. In an effort to free the other spirits from Walter's grip, Thomas and Steve decide to try to provoke him into a confrontation. Greg also joins the investigation with the Ovilus. Alright, Walter. I'm calling you out, man. I am calling you out, man. You're not letting the spirit talk, so why don't you talk to me? Or do you not have the power to talk to me? You're weak. That's why you're using all the other spirits. And that's why you're forbidding them from talking to me. I know you're here now. You can't hide. And you can't keep these spirits from talking. Not with me. Come on, talk to me. I'm stronger than Walter. Walter's weak. And he knows it. I don't know what kind of power you think you have over the spirits in this town. But I'm here now. And I'm way stronger than you. As they head up to the Widow's Watch, things start to intensify. Why don't somebody speak with me? We're up here in this pretty place right up here. It's really neat. Whoa, did you hear that? Walter! Hey! He said Walter! I heard that. Did you hear that? Walter! Meanwhile, downstairs... I'm gonna come upstairs. Whoa. Okay, I just got the word safe. Hey, Steve, I'm... Safe gateway. Safe and gateway as I was about to start walking up the steps. Safe and gateway. Oh, okay. You think you're, you think you're safe in your gateway? Yeah? Did you hear that? Yeah. Same voice, it said Walter. Yeah? Come on, Walter. We were just talking. What happened? Let's talk again. Come on, we can't hear you. You gotta speak up. You know what? I swear, I think it's a demon. Come on, Walter. We were just talking. What happened? Come on, Walter. We were just talking. What happened? We don't believe that Walter is actually a demon, but that he may just be using this as a scare tactic. Are you afraid of Walter? At this point, Greg brings in an experiment. He places a pendulum on the table to see if the spirits can move it. Tell me shirt this is! Come on, Naomi. Naomi, do you know me? Do you like it here? Quick. 
Keep in mind, this is the same window where Devin picked up high readings on the Melmeter, not to mention its historical significance to Naomi. After a short break, Hayden and I take the direct link out one last time. Is there anybody here that wants to talk? Do you like to have fun? Do you like to laugh? Like, do you like that we're here? I like to have fun. Why won't you talk to us? You talk to them. Yeah, we're, we're being actually a lot nicer. Is, do you prefer rude people? We can send the other guys back in. Unfortunately, we did not receive any responses on this device during our investigation, but we will definitely continue to use it more in the future. Greg then volunteers to sit with the Ovulus 5 alone in the room with the pendulum. Why won't you talk to me? Where I keep thinking I see something moving over here in the shadows. Oh, is there someone over here? Did you guys hear that knock? Yep. Was that you guys? Nope. I just want to make a note. There is something in there because it's got me on edge. I actually don't feel comfortable putting my back towards it. Because of this, we send in Steve with a hand camera. I don't want to go in there, but at the same time, I just can't put my back towards it oh, either. Oh, look, look. What, what? There it is again. There it is. It's hovering. What is that? I don't know. You see it? I see it. What is that? Can you say something in here? What are you? What in the heck is that? It's just there. there. What are you? I swear I keep hearing like a woman crying. I know, me too. Where are you? What is that thing? And it's just like moving up and then getting fainter and fainter and fainter. Are you going outside? Okay, I don't know what this thing is. Okay, it's going. Yes, yeah, it looks like it went out that window. Oh God, that was crazy. This anomaly is strange because it produces a small shadow, but also has a translucent look. We are unable to identify if this is some sort of bug or if it is truly paranormal. What do you think? As the night grows old, Steve and Greg grab the spirit box for one final sweep of the building. We talked right here by this shirt, right here. I heard something. I heard something. Come on, tell me what your name is. Doug? I think it is Doug or John. After reviewing, we believe that it is saying the name Job, spelled J-O-B, like in the Bible. Doug? I think that says Steve. Did it say Steve? I think so. Yeah, my name is Steve. People. 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 Yep, we're people. What are you? People. 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 
Do you live here? They then move up to the widow's watch. What happened to you? What? What? Meanwhile, downstairs on camera 5, we capture a really neat orb. Hi. 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 Oh, that was nice. Hi. Hi. We're going to go home. And I'm going to thank you for talking to me, okay? Yeah. So what do you think about that? Is that okay? Okay. Okay. Between the extra energy produced by this TV and us provoking Walter, we believe that we helped these spirits break free from his grip to communicate with us. That being said, we decide to end our investigation at the Allison home on a good note. Our investigations in Metamora, Indiana proved to be a unique experience for all of us. 1.4 Between two nights and four locations, we captured plenty of paranormal evidence. Oh, butterfly above you is moving. Really? Butterfly above you is moving. From echoes of a tragic past, I feel a woman screaming and trying to scream because she's on fire. To an eager voice from beyond. Come on, Naomi. Come on. It is obvious that these spirits want to communicate. <laughs> but could the entity known as Walter be keeping them from doing so? Who's malevolent? Did you just make a noise? Something it, just moved upstairs. It seems that we may have uncovered one of the many mysteries of Metamora. For the latest news on Midnight's Light Paranormal, like us on our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, and follow us on Instagram. All of these links can be accessed under the About tab on our YouTube channel.